Thank you very much, Caroline, uh, for this. Um, I have lost track of what I want to say because I'm very curious to know what is in the envelope. So <laughs> now I was requested to talk about the appropriate technologies in Africa. But uh, more interestingly is that our, um, I was requested to be a prophet and uh, indicate what will uh, be the appropriate technology in 2035. This is the first time that I'm doing that. I've never been a prophet. So I've been thinking about the issue of technology which is um, a very important uh, topic uh, in our life. Let me say that uh, um, the whole history of humanity has been the history of technology, has been the history of innovation. When we trace the whole history, we'll see that uh, each phase of the human life has been the struggle to make the life better and better. And that was done through technology. We have seen since the very beginning human being trying to change from the most rudimentary way of living, hunting, collecting fruits to survive, introducing then agriculture and the agriculture meant introducing instruments. And this is technology coming in. We've seen people trying to shorten the distance between places, introducing means of transport. And in introducing means of transport, um, the wheel, animals were brought in. And to achieve the objective of shortening the distance, transporting much more products, um, that was done using also technology. We've seen in the later stages the need to go even further, visiting far um, going far in terms of uh, distance using maritime transport and uh, Chinese uh, innovations in terms of how to dominate um, the oceans, the storms, bad weather has helped a lot. And then the humankind was be able to um, navigate for long distance and uh, against all those adversities. We see also people trying to conquer other territories. So the armies, the empires that uh, were respected and they have been able to conquer much uh, more territories were the ones which incorporated in their army technology. Better um, um, rifles, better um, uh, guns, those are the ones who prevailed over the others who were lagging behind. So we have seen um, in the whole history of the humanity that uh, the human being has always tried to look to its own agenda, its own objectives, the idea of um, having better conditions of life, but they did that by incorporating technology. So technology was the way they used to advance their own life, to advance their own um, agenda. Western countries has been able to move to Africa. And they found, at that time, our ancestors. And they were able to dominate them because they were using better technologies that, than what we're doing. When they then got control over our continent, the agenda was now 
how to extract more and more raw materials, how to extract local products and take them to Europe. This meant technology that was able to respond to that um, objective. That meant technology that was able to uh, facilitate transport of those products that way, which were then processed in Europe for that market and in many situations brought back to Africa. And we bought the same products that came from Africa in uh, 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 paying higher prices. So all the time, the one who controls technology, the ones who have the better technology will always dominate the, the others. We got our independence. What then happened? Well, instead of uh, drawing our own agenda, someone drew that agenda for us. And the idea was that uh, in the past, you have been a reservoir of raw materials, and that raw materials was taken and uh, transformed somewhere else. Now your agenda should be to change that situation. Your agenda should be to industrialize Africa. So you have to industrialize Af Africa in order to substitute imports of your own products because those products are taken, go to the Europe and come back and then you import them and pay a higher price. So you have to industrialize your continent. Millions of dollars were poured into Africa in order to industrialize Africa. Decades passed. And the result is that Africa did not industrialize itself. Industrialization in Africa failed. And it failed exactly because probably the agenda was not exactly ours. The agenda was also imported. So at a certain point, someone said, probably what you need to do is to have your appropriate technology, the appropriate technology which will respond to the needs of your continent. Um, we have this concept of um, appropriate technology developed but, uh, by an economist, Dr. Ernest Schumacher. And for him, appropriate technology is a much more contained, small-scale, decentralized technology, which is more people-centered. If you look to that concept, it seems that uh, it really can explain the phenomena that happened in the area of uh, mobile phones. Because we were used to the fact that the technology must, uh, we have to follow the technology slowly. But mobile phone is one of the technologies that have a huge success in Africa. When it started in the 1990s, uh, if you look to more or less 1990, we have four million people using uh, mobile phones. Today, I think half a billion of African uh, population has mobile phones. So it seems that the, as soon as this technology is really serving people, directly uh, the people, is people-centered, was much more appealing and was able to capture the interests of the African people. But it was also, also really solving the basic problem of communication in Africa, which was not solved by the uh, landline phones because of the huge infrastructure that is necessary to have the phones in the continent. And we know how huge is our continent. And it is impossible in terms of our infrastructure to extend it to, to everybody. So mobile phone uh, technology is one of those technology that work it, is working well in, in our continent. But some people say that the concept of appropriate technology now is, is dead. It's, it doesn't work because even with the, uh, um, the old efforts that were done to try to add, um, uh, transform or to adapt the technology that is important to the local necessities, uh, we didn't solve the problems of, uh, of Africa. So industrialization di didn't work. Appropriate technology, it seems that it is not working. Um, many generations of technology has passed through Africa, but the problems of Africa remains the same. Diseases, poverty, we are lagging behind technology, we are suffering with hunger, same problems but uh, many technology we have seen in this, in this continent. If we look to the Millennium Development Goals, you will find out the same problems 
that are there and we, we, which we're thinking that we'll be solving by 2015 are the same that we had many uh, centuries um, before. But it is, uh, we have to consider that technology, we can't do away with technology. We can't avoid technology. Technology should be part of the solution of the problems of, um, of our continent. And indeed, in the uh, book that uh, has been distributed, I've looked to, to that, the authors are indicating that there are some uh, driving force of innovation for the future of, of Africa. And technology is one of these driving forces that is indicated in that, um, in, in, this, in this study. Technology is therefore um, fundamental for the development of Africa. What we have to ask ourselves is, which technology can change uh, this continent? Some people now talk about the idea of sustainable technology, a technology that is appropriate to the context, a technology that is low carbon, low cost, low impact. Is a technology that uh, should um, respond to the real needs of our continent. Um, when we I, would, I didn't want to anticipate what is in, um, in uh, this publication because we'll be discussing these scenarios of the future of Africa. But it's interesting that um, um, this book is telling us that um, we see in the future of, uh, of, of Africa three different situations, three different scenarios. They call the first scenario the wireless engagement. A second scenario, which they called it the informal, the new normal, informality becoming normal in the continent. And then the third scenario, which they called sincerely Africa. I looked to that and I said, which technology could serve each and every scenario that we are having in front of us? Is there an appropriate technology that could help us to really boost the development of Africa? So if we, when we look to the, to, the, to the first scenario, in the first scenario, they, which they call wireless engagement, is a scenario whereby we find a global service-oriented economy. Africa are, uh, following what is happening in the world. Africa responding to what the world is requiring. Well, in that scenario, if we think about the appropriate technology, the technology that could help us to catch uh, the path of development, we, we can see a situation whereby we could have some competitive advantages. For example, today, we're all talking about green technologies, and we know how Africa is endowed with natural resources which, which could respond in a better way to these um, uh, green technologies, the renewable uh, energy resources, we have them, all of them. So if you want to have appropriate technology to follow that in Africa, we need to concentrate ourselves in looking to how can we catch this train that is passing through. Everybody is now talking about this. Everybody is, is talking about renewable energies, and we have those resources here. But also, in this uh, scenario, uh, we find a, a picture which is depicted looking to the new generation, very dynamic, middle class coming in. And this is something that we, we see now happening every day. Um, someone talk about the cheetah generation, these dynamic young people who are trying, they, who are convinced that this continent can change, this continent can be better. So if you want to respond to the cheetah generation, we have to come out with the appropriate technology that responds to their needs, needs of communication, needs of uh, a better life, luxury products, and things like that. Well, if we, someone yesterday was asking, uh, if we want to know which innovation we need in Africa, we have to ask it, to whom this technology is serving. If we're looking to cheetah generation, of course, um, Africa has to run, has to do much more than it's doing now because this generation is much more dynamic and very fast. But uh, appropriate technology cannot only respond to the cheetah generation, to these young dynamic people. We have also to think about 
those who are neglected, those who are remi re remaining behind. Um, we are, while the cheetah generation is looking for the last gadget in terms of phone, there are a lot of people in the rural areas who are looking f just for a mean, a way of communication, cheap mobile phone. But even if they get that mo cheap mobile phone, they still have another difficulty. They still have another obstacle, which is we don't have electricity. If you want uh, uh, to create an appropriate technology, you are not only responding to the issue of a cheap phone, but you have to also respond to the issue of how to charge that phone. And then even when you are, are able to charge the phone, then you have to respond to the other problem, how to put airtime in that phone. So when yesterday we arrived, someone was telling us that uh, there is a charging station somewhere there to our phone. We have to look to the situation whereby, whereby in the rural area, someone must come out with an innovation of a charging station. I may say even a mobile charging station because this, there are people today who have to march for two, three, five kilometers to go and charge the phone and come back home. So the appropriate technology must respond to these kind of situations. We have to think about the poor farmers who want to be informed where are the markets, who wants to be informed what are the prices, which is the best market where I can put my products. All these people, what they want in this scenario is communication, is to be connected to the rest of the world. Appropriate technology in this wireless engagement for me must respond to the idea of connecting Africa to the rest of the world. The second scenario is the informal, which becomes normal. We know that 55% of the Sub-Saharan Africa uh, GDP is on the informal economy. Uh, in the past, there were attempts to do away with informality. Today, I think that uh, slowly we are understanding that uh, there is no way you can do away with the informalities. I've seen in many cities, police trying to get rid of those people selling in the streets. It has been a long battle. In the last 20 years, nothing ha has happened. And informality is growing. And as we see, now it accounts for more than half of our, the GDP uh, in, in, in sub-Saharan Africa. Well, if you want to respond to this new uh, situation, we have to find a way to connect the informal to the formal. We have to find a way to talk to formal and uh, convince the formal that uh, you have to take in account the informal economy. So we need uh, also, in terms of technology, if we're talking about appropriate technology, that technology that is the one that must facilitate that the business continue to happen in that informal uh, area that must capture the vibrancy of the, inform the, the informal sector and match formal and uh, informal. We are seeing now uh, some initiatives, interesting initiatives. If you look to the, uh, the phenomenon of M-Pesa in, uh, in Kenya, uh, this system whereby now it is possible to transfer money using just the phone, you are having your bank in your mobile phone. This is changing the life of many people. So we are not only talking about the situation whereby the people now can communicate, but also they can even send money back home to the, the rural areas without moving and without having in a, a bank account. Because the bank system is something that we cannot prevail in that scenario in the future of the informal economy. It's too... Um, street uh, it demands a lot of things. The informal economy is too dynamic to follow the rules of the banking sector. So the banking sector must look to the informal. And we are seeing this kind of uh, a situation in the example that we're giving of M-Pesa. M-Pesa in Kenya now has something like 9 million people moving uh, $320 million per month. So this is something that... Uh, you have to take into account when you are thinking about appropriate technology for the future. 
Uh, when you go to cities like Kampala, and I was I'm citing Kampala not because this is the most chaotic city, but because I've been there two weeks ago, and you see situations, very strange situations, whereby the idea of uh, or, uh, traffic, having order in the traffic is completely lost. And uh, it's completely useless to try to get rid of that situation. What is necess necessary is that the formal must start recognizing this system. And if you want to come out with the appropriate technology, we have to look to that situation. It's completely necessary for you to try, uh, you know, to, to say that uh, cows in the city is a problem and we have to get, get rid of it. We have to look to that as an incentive to innovate. We have to find appropriate technology to respond to this kind of situation. You know, the robots, as they say in, in, in South Africa, in Kampala, I think they are completely useless, uh, even ridiculous, uh, looking to the way people move and do things. You see the means of transport. The buses, you can't use them because the traffic is so chaotic that uh, anybody who is trying to settle a, a transport company have using big bus is completely lost. That business will not work. So now you find this phenomenon of border border, if they call them. And you find that there is a motorcycle, which was designed for two people. They put there three or four. So the appropriate technology, instead of trying to get rid of this situation, what you have to do is now to build a motorcycle for four. That's what they need in Kampala. This is how we have to uh, try to think and handle and tackle the issue of, of the informal. Um, the informal gives really an op opportunity to the thinkers, to the innovators, to invent and innovate in those kind of situations. Informal is not bid, it's not organized, it's chaotic. Now, your appropriate technology must try to fit in that and change that situation, if that is the case. The third scenario is what uh, the authors called sincerely African. We see a situation whereby the African's population is growing. And uh, the statistics says and the, the predictions say that in, two, in, um, in the next, in 2050, will be almost uh, 2 billion in Africa. When, uh, let me say that in Africa, usually, we're not able to meet targets, usually. We have problems. When they say it, by 2015, we have to get rid of poverty, whatever. We never meet targets. But this one, I can assure you, will meet this one. <laughs> so the idea of uh, failed industrialization in Africa, failed uh, use of appropriate technology or sustainable technology, whatever you, you want to indicate, you bring as a concept, uh, now brings us to another situation whereby probably we have to go back to our roots and uh, we'll more and more try to rely in our traditions. A good example uh, should be that of traditional medicine. We have seen developments in medicine, but we know that 80% of um, Africans' population still rely on traditional medicine. We didn't get rid of that. So I look, I see the situation whereby in the future we'll more and more go back and rely more on this traditional medicine. If we're talking about appropriate technology, what is necessary probably is uh, to try to look to the traditional medicine and bring the appropriate technology that can uplift this traditional medicine. It's not just a matter of let's go back and surviving using traditional medicine because we're not no more able to do that. What we need is to harness the traditional medicine and uplift it to be, to accompany the current situation. And we can see that uh, in the world, even in the Western world, more and more traditional me medicine is appealing. More and more industry, uh, I may say, traditional knowledge-based industry is appealing. This is the industry for the future.
This is the industry that can respond to our needs in terms of uh, um, um, providing solutions to health solutions, but also covering the entire world. So yesterday we saw uh, uh, from a presenter from Ghana, uh, good examples of what is happening in, uh, in Ghana, where technology is now trying to uplift what is happening with the tra traditional healers. I think this is the way forward. This is what could be the future of industry in our um, continent. So we're not talking about just uh, uh, basic necessities innovation in TK. We are talking about a situation where we can uplift this innovation in TK to respond to, to our needs. It's worth to say that uh, whatever scenario we'll have in the future, we'll still have to deal with the basic needs of this continent, hunger, poverty, health issues, uh, lack of paved roads, and things like that. So the appropriate technology should, should also be um, uh, able to respond to those uh, necessities. Let me end uh, um, by indicating that, uh, of course, we have a role. We have a role in terms of uh, helping Africa to identify this appropriate technology in uh, our continent. Um, I am aware, I'm aware that the, the World Intellectual Property Organization is uh, again engaging this concept of appropriate technology and a number of uh, uh, workshops has been run uh, this year in different countries, Ethiopia, Zambia and the others. And even in the uh, next year, there are a number of projects that will be undertaken trying to bring the issue of appropriate technology. And uh, I also believe that the appropriate technology cannot be only the one that uh, uh, originates from Africa. I think we, we need to facilitate access to technological information and find appropriate technology to be then adapted to the uh, local situation. What we have to avoid is simply to take the technology and think that anything can be adapted and be used in Africa. We have to start from Africa, see the problem, and then we find the, 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 the right solution. I see that I don't have mu much more time. Uh, and uh, so I, I will stop here. Thank you very much.